Welcome back to our video series on subroutines and methods. We have already covered procedures without parameters as well as with parameters. And in our last lesson, we have looked at functions without parameters. We are going to extend our functions today by adding parameters to it. And you should have already a pretty good idea of what that entails because you know what a function is as well as what parameters are because we have covered that when we looked at procedures. So some functions need specific information to be able to perform their task and that information is passed through via parameters to the function. Each function can have multiple parameters which means more than one and we're going to look at some examples just now to look how that looks in practice but remember that a function can only have one result so some of the examples of functions that we have used already since grade 10 and those are functions with parameters stored in existing pre-programmed units they are for example int to string int to string is a casting function it's a function that converts a number into a different data type for example in this case an integer value needs to be passed through this function in order to convert it into a string value we've had string to int that i could add there that that passes a string value um, to be converted into an integer then we had string handling functions that we used copy is one that has three parameters the text we want to copy from, the starting point, as well as the number of characters that we want to copy. Then we had the pos um, function that has a substring, a text that we are looking for within another text. So there are two parameters. Random range also has two parameters to generate a number between two values. So our general structure of a function with parameters is then we have a keyword in this case function and this is a private declaration of the form so it's in our private section of our unit um, is valid is a descriptive name of our function then we have our parameter with data type in this case sid and of data type string and then we have our result data type before we are going to look at an example and look at some code in delphi i want you to remember a couple of things the first thing is that the number and this is very important the number of arguments the call statement contains in terms of order as well as data type should has to must correspond with a list of parameters so you cannot um you know do the order incorrectly or change data types it has to be the same as the function as it was declared the parameters and the arguments when you call the function needs to correspond secondly parameters are variables with local scope of the procedure and thus only exist while the function is executed and they cease to exist after it has been called then the final result of the function can either be assigned to result and that's the preferred way and or the function name and we're going to look at that when we do our example just now but re remember we have already covered this so you should be familiar with that and then just another reminder that if you want to um, obtain a framework for the definition of the function we can simply use the shortcut Control shift c so after you have declared your function um, privately you can now press Control shift c and it will build that framework for you so in our example activity we have a program that receives different cell phone numbers and checks whether they are valid or not because a user can make various mistakes when entering a cell phone number so it needs to check three things. Firstly, 
the length of the sulfur number, and it needs to be exactly 10 digits long. Um, secondly, whether the number starts with a zero. And then thirdly, whether the number only consists of digits and not letters or special characters. So let's have a look at our program. So over here we can see the program you asks for three cell phone numbers and then we can press our test um, button and error messages or if all three are valid it will display a message that our cell phone numbers are valid. So let's have a look at the actual code. So we have over here and I'm going to zoom in we have our declaration of our function, our keyword, we have our descriptive name is valid cell, and then we have our parameter, um, the information that need the extra information that the function needs in order to um, execute, so s cell, and then our data type of our function. Then in our Definition of our function, we have some local variables, a flag, as well as i. i is used to loop through our cell phone number to check whether it only contains digits. And I will show there's a, another way that we can do it, which I will highlight just now. Um, so the first thing that we check is whether the cell phone number contains 10 digits or whether the first character is a zero. If it's not, we will say that our B flag is false. We have to initialize B flag as true in the beginning and whenever we come across an error, we will now say that our cell phone number is wrong. And then if this is wrong, then we already know our result will be wrong as well. But if both of them are true and we have not um, initialized B flag as false, we will or assign a false value to our flag, then we're going to check whether our cell phone number contains any dig um, digits that are not allowed, like letters or special characters. So we're going to loop through while B flag and we're going to end our loop as soon as we come across an error or I, which is initialized to two because we've already checked our first character, whether it's a zero and we're going to check, we're going to loop through until um, I is the same as the length of S cell, which in this case is 10. If the, um, if the character is not a zero or one, two, three, four, all the way to nine, then we set our flag to false and the loop ends and our result will be false. If we get all the way to the end and no error is found, then our B flag will still be true as we've initialized it in the beginning and our result will be true. Another way of checking whether the cell phone number is correct or valid and contains only um, digits, and we've used that in grade 10 already, is, I'm going to add a comment here, is our val procedure. Not cal, val. Val. And it has three parameters. The first one is our cell phone number. And then and this S cell is the parameter that will be passed through the function. But it needs some two more and those need to be declared locally. So we need the, the variable or the um, parameter that the, the S cell will be converted into. And in this case, we want to convert it into um, I cell, into an integer. Very important, 10 digit numbers will still be valid as integers. If you want to test anything longer than um, 10, 
like an ID number, which has 13 digits, it needs to be declared as with data type double. I sell, and then we have I code. Um, and that is the, um, the position of the mistake, if there is any, that will be stored in there. Just a quick look into the future. Um, these two parameters, I sell and I code, are very special um, parameters, and we're going to look at it in our next video. We they are called reference parameters because they not they don't pass information to our function. They actually receive values. So a reference parameter can pass and receive um, value um, within our um, function. So we are going to look at that, um, but. This is a procedure, so it will be a procedure with reference parameters, but we're going to look at that in our next video. So after all of that has been done, and this is our function, we can now call um, on that function. So we have on our um, procedure on click of the button, we have three local um, Boolean variables. Um, one corresponding for the student, one for the mother, and one for the father. We initialize them by calling on our function, and it will test, it will execute that function now, and then we can simply ask the question. If, if it's not valid, then we'll have this error message, etc., etc., etc. If all of them are valid, and I just want to highlight that you can see that nowhere here um, are we using our Boolean with equals to false or equals to true? A Boolean variable is assumed true unless it is um, said to be false. So if I want to say, I can say if not B is, is valid or if B is valid equals false. But if I have it standalone like this, it will be assumed to be true. All right, guys, that is the example. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video.